scales and sides. I want to get to know you. I hope you get to know me too. Hey beautiful people, welcome back to This Girl's Insights. My name is Oyin and I am This Girl. Um, so today I am back with a bit of a, I don't know, different video for me. I decided to make a quick video just talking about, well, me using this multi-cooker, how it works, me trying to figure it out. And y'all, if I can figure it out, hopefully y'all can figure it out if you're thinking of getting something like that. Um, so I'm just going to make a quick dinner. I'm going to be making pork chops with sweet potato wedges and some veg on the side, so like carrots and broccoli nothing fancy today's a bit like a review slash the first time i'm using a multi multi cooker if you've seen my empty flat tour you will know that in my kitchen i have counter space i have wardrobe i have a fridge freezer but for some reason when they were making this kitchen the landlord decided not to put an actual like cooker in here so i don't have a hob i don't have an oven um i do have a separate kitchen downstairs like a full-on kitchen downstairs that i can use um but then I have nothing in my room. And to be fair, I didn't plan on cooking in my room just because I didn't want to stink up the place. So I decided I'm going to unveil the multi cooker I bought. Now, guys, you're going to have to bear with me in this video because before I bought this multi cooker, I didn't even know they existed. Is it multi cooker or multi cooker? I feel like I want to keep saying multi cooker, but it must be multi cooker. One of them ones, y'all pick which one you want. So this is what the multi cooker looks like. Um, now I'm going to show you everything that came in the packaging. So as you can see, I've not put it together. So this is what came in. So this is the handle for the lid. Um, this is the lid. This is a socket to plug it in. And this is the actual pan. So as you can see, the pan actually is attached to the base. I think the only time I've ever seen something like this is, you know when you go to street markets and they like cook up the food in front of you, like they use something similar to this, like a bigger version of this. Even though this is pretty big, this is, I think it's like 40 centimeters. Um, I will measure that and come back to you. But yeah, this is like 40 centimeters. As you can see, the pan is not actually that deep. So like if I put my finger in it, you can see like, Basically, my pinky goes in there. So it's not that deep. Um, so you've got the pan, but then it's very wide. So it's like a massive pizza pan. And then you've then got these two plastic handles on the side as well. And then you've got the back of it. So the only thing I'm slightly worried about is how am I going to wash this? Because I can't exactly take out the pan to wash it. And I can't dip this in water because I think there's some kind of electricity in there. So I'm not sure how this situation is going to work. But yeah, so this is everything that came in the box. You've got the pan you got the plug, you got the handles, and then you got the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly put this together. Now before I start this video, I had a quick read of the manual. And they didn't really give any instructions about how to put it together. But I'm, I'm assuming that's just because it's like ridiculously simple. At least I hope that's the case. So let's see if we can figure this out. So I'm just going to stick this here like this. I took the metal bit stuck it into the black handle lid then unscrewed the screw the screw top screwdriver thingamajiggy unscrewed the screw that's what it is and all i'm gonna do is connect these via the lid so once you've put this together put this screw into the hole in the lid and then you just want to screw that together so i'm just turning that so you just want to screw that so that it's completely tight so that is basically the lid. Oh, I forgot to say, the other thing that came was the manual as well. So that's the other thing that came in the box. So that's basically taken me 30 seconds to put the lid on. Um, and then this is the plug that came with it. So obviously you take off the plastic bit. This is the bit that goes on the wall. Again, I assume if you get this in another country, I assume they make it with the relevant plugs. And then on this as well, obviously you've got the bit that goes into the cooker. But then you've then got this, um, I don't know if you can see, you've got this like knob with numbers on there. So it starts off at zero and it goes all the way up to five, which is red, which is the hottest one. They, in the manual, they actually explain what each of the numbers mean. And it looks pretty simple. So for instance, setting one is 100 degrees to so 120 degrees Celsius. Um, setting two is 140 to so 160 
So I guess basically if you wanted to cook something, it kind of works like an oven. Cook something, it kind of works like an oven. Um, and then you just put it on the relevant setting. Now obviously there's certain things you can cook in here that you normally wouldn't cook in an oven. So it's actually giving you a guide. So it says like, if you're cooking paella, you cook it for 45 minutes, start at five and then four to three. If you're cooking pizza, you cook it for 10 minutes at five. If you'd like to fry your egg, cook it for two minutes and between the two to three um, setting. So I feel like most of this you have to figure out as you go along, like I'll have to figure it out. But then you literally do get like a table there to start you off. I don't know if you guys can see that. If you can't, I apologize. But that's basically the situation. Before I plug this in, I'm actually going to give this a clean. I'm just going to clean this with like a normal dishwashing sponge. Um, though worth noting, use the soft side. Don't use the don't use this side, because basically you're meant to clean this with a cloth or something soft. Because anything like like that's rough or sharp could scratch it so you're actually meant to use like plastic um utensils in here as well but i've basically just put a bit of dishwasher liquid on this as well now they did say in the instructions just use water and if you're going to use dishwasher liquid make sure you like rinse it off properly because obviously that's going to be in your food but then i can't just use water like i need to use dishwasher liquid i think that's the one thing i'm worried about like if i'm cooking like like today i'm cooking wedges that's fine but let's say i decide to cook like stew with like chicken or like like something that's actually pretty messy how do i make sure this gets cleaned properly without ruining it but then we'll figure that out when i started to do my research after i got this i saw like there were different types of multi cookers so they were like really deep ones and it does range so like it starts from like you can get anything from like 50 pounds so i saw one for like 850 pounds so the price does range and you get what you pay for and now what i'm basically doing is i've come back with a clean sponge so not the soapy one a clean one and i'm wiping out all the soap all of the soap so i'm wiping all of that away and then i'm taking some kitchen towel and then i'm going to wipe that again till it's dry so what i'm basically trying to do is get rid of every possible bit of dishwasher liquid that could still be in here okay so that's not dry but i'm ocd so i'm going to come back with another wet cloth and wipe this again now in order to use this i'm just going to take the plug try and find the bit where it goes in so it seems like again i can't see if you can tell you've got this rod thing here and you've got two tiny holes on the side so that goes into this section like this okay so you have to really push that in there um to get the plug in but then that's in there now so setup wise this has actually been really easy the thing that's taking me the longest is cleaning it and that's just because i was being extra with the cleaning but then literally it took me like 30 seconds to put the lid together and then not even much longer to just plug this in like you can set this up in two minutes if you're just trying to have a quick rinse get it done and dust it but yeah that's all set up now now if i remember the instructions correctly um i think it said something along the lines of when you first plug it in when you're looking to use it let it preheat for about 10 minutes so basically what you're supposed to do is you're meant to set it up clean it plug it in then put it on setting two for 10 minutes and then once it's heated up for 10 minutes you then come back and put it on the setting you actually want so in this case i would put it on setting four and that's when you stick your food in and so like a little red light has come on there so there's like a little tiny triangle arrow thing oh that's getting pretty warm <laughs> okay don't lean on it guys when you switch it on <laughs> well that was a bit of a surprise um do not lean on the cooker when you switch it on it gets warm very quickly now they did say in the manual make sure you leave at least 12 centimeters between every surface so make sure like there's space around the cooker i should probably also take the piece of paper off the hot cooker 10 minutes have come and gone well about 10 minutes i really wasn't keeping track feels like it's been 10 minutes it's probably been eight nine minutes but you know what i am tired i am hungry and the light is oh no the light's still on dang it okay don't watch the process guys that's the lesson but it's actually just gone off perfect so if i put it smack on setting four but now it's preheated again, so I don't even know what's going on. So do I wait? Okay, well, I don't get this. So it says, put it on setting two, let the multi cooker heat up for 10 minutes, then put it on the temperature you require, and then the heat indicator light will come on again, and then once it goes off, 
the multi cooker is ready to use. Though, I was about to complain, but you know what? It wasn't even a minute. It's gone off as it's gone off again on my setting four. Um, now, just so you guys are aware, it actually makes a little clicking sound. So when the heat indicator light goes off, you notice I got distracted like ten seconds ago because I actually heard the click. So that's pretty useful. So the first thing I'm going to put in warning, guys, this thing is actually ridiculously hot. Like <laughs> the lid is boiling. Um, but I guess seeing as it's like an oven. Um, I can see why the lid is boiling. Now I can smell like multi cooker may, may emit a slight odor or smoke due to the burning of the manufacturing residues. This is completely normal and would disappear after a few uses. Um, so I get that they're saying it's normal, but then I'm not sure if I want to cook my food with like this. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's a smell. I guess the new ovens have this smell. I don't even know. Okay, first things first is I'm going to put in my pre-seasoned pork chops. So the pre-seasoned pork chops have been seasoned with peri-peri sauce. Um, now, I think I mentioned, I think this pan is about 40 centimeters. So this pan is very wide. So I feel like I should be able to fit in quite a few stuff in there. First things first, make sure your hands are clean. And I'm going to stick the second one in there as well. Now, you will notice I have not... Oh, that's sticky. Now, I was watching like a QVC, like shopping channel thing where they had this. And they actually mentioned that you don't need oil to use this. I'm not sure I actually believe that. I feel like that don't make no sense. But then because what I'm making is actually like, because I'm making pork chops, I'm not that worried because I feel like it's going to kind of emit its own oils. But now I say that actually, I'm slightly worried. Do you know, guys, I'm going to brush the pan with a bit of oil I'll be right back because I feel like if I don't put oil on there it's gonna stick and then I can't wash it properly so what am I gonna do okay guys I would just say use whatever oil you would normally use um yeah because that's sticking I can see that sticking already Ooh. I did not think this through this has totally ruined my brush my plastic brush yeah y'all do not put your plastic brush in this it will melt it ah my days Okay. Oh my days, sorry guys, this video is such a hot mess. But I guess this is like, you know, this is reality. At least you know it's definitely my first time using it. So to get the oil on there, ow, that totally burnt me. I'm basically just using like a bit of kitchen towel because I think I know that's not going to melt. I've got some sweet potato wedges here. So this is basically being coated in a bit of oil. Again, use whichever oil you want. I would recommend olive oil. Um, coated in a bit of oil with some salt and mixed herbs. And then last but not least, I think I'm actually, I was going to wait on the veg, but I think I'm actually going to stick the veg in now. And then I can take it out if it's done earlier than the rest. So it's almost like a bit of a roast. And I think the idea of a multi-cooker is you're meant to be able to cook several things all at the same time. So here's the situation. So you've got sweet potato wedges on the side there. Then you've got your carrot and broccoli on there as well. And then I've got two pork chops on there as well. Well, I guess I say pork chops, pork steaks, whatever they're called. And I'm just going to cover that up. And I'm going to leave that for about 10 minutes, come back and check on it. And then another 10 minutes, come back and check on it. And then it should be done in like five. So yeah, that's basically it. It looks pretty easy to use so far. Let's see how the food turns out. That will be the real question. I've decided to come and check on this. Um, and I can smell a bit of burning, which is not a good situation. Um... Okay, so that's fine. I'm just going to flip the, the pork steak or the pork chop. Oh, this pork chop here is basically charred, which is weird because the other one is perfectly fine. Okay, now I'm glad I made two. Oh, that is completely charred. <coughs> oh, my days. 
the veggies are a little bit burnt as well okay if you were expecting like a professional review of how to use this I apologize because I am obviously fumbling and burning my dinner um, this is not cute at all oh I burned some of the sweet potatoes though they are crispy I think that's a weird thing it's almost like with the sweet potatoes is made them crispy with the vegetables it's almost steamed it so I'm not sure how that works but yeah I'm burning the sweet potatoes and I think maybe what I didn't think about is the fact that so I don't know if you guys can see but like you know that's just a bit burned there I didn't think about the fact that in a normal oven obviously when you put it on a certain like setting the like the the sweet potato or whatever it is the pork chops aren't actually in direct contact with the source of heat so again i'm not sure how this this works we'll have to play around with this guys um if anyone knows please comment below help a sister out so i don't burn my dinners for the next three weeks like it's definitely cooked the food like no question about that i think it's just i think i've put the heating on too high like I didn't think about the fact that the food would be in direct contact with that heat. So it's slightly different to an oven. Oh, those, those them potatoes are not done. They are not done. I am just going to reduce the heat. I'm going to take the heat back down to two. And then I'm just going to let this, I don't even know, steam or cook or whatever for 10 more minutes. Or maybe five more minutes, seeing as it's half burnt. This has been in here for 25 minutes now, so I'm just going to switch this off. Um, ooh! This situation is so not cute anymore. Now, I will show you guys what this looks like. Oh, quite a lot of steam in there. Okay, so this is the food. As you can see, the sweet potatoes are quite burnt. Um, the veg is slightly burnt. And the steaks, the pork steaks, they're fine, but I suspect that they're overcooked. As a summary, that was a complete and utter fail. <laughs> I am so annoyed. I'm so hungry as well. I'm still going to eat that dinner. That's way too much food to chuck away. But yeah. Okay. Y'all, I'm not sure if this video is a review. I'm not sure if it's a cry for help. So someone can tell me how to use this machine. Um, as you can see, that was me using it for the first time with no instructions with no guide well within the manual but then with no specific guidance on how it works properly um and to be fair it wasn't the end of the world like you know what yeah the sweet potatoes are burnt the veg is slightly burnt but you know what at the end of the day like i should have thought through and realized the fact that the sweet potatoes were actually touching like in contact with the source of heat maybe i should have reduced the heat as opposed to treating it like a normal oven so I think I just need to research it and figure out how it works. So guys, I apologize if you were expecting like a professional guide as in here's how to use this machine. Um, This is more of a professional how not to use this machine. Um, okay, so for real, just try and review the multi-cooker so far. What I will say is putting it together, that was super easy. Um, All you do is put the lid together, plug it... Um clean it out, plug it in, sort it. Um, the heating it up situation, like, you know, remember to put it, start off at two and then take it to the heating setting you want. I think the bit where I went wrong is the heating setting I actually chose to cook it. And what I should have done is I probably should have had a read of the guide. Because the funny thing is, in the guide, it does say If you're cooking steaks cook them for five minutes and use the three to four temperature setting so I use the four temperature setting and I let it in there for over 20 minutes so <laughs> oh I can't even blame anyone but myself it literally does say right here cook it for five minutes <laughs> Okay, so I basically cooked it on the higher setting and I cooked it for 20 minutes longer than they said I should. Um, so I know where I went wrong, guys. I know how I burnt my dinner. 
do you know what happened I kept on thinking it's like an oven it's like an oven so I was treating it like an oven but then the funny thing is that it's more like a frying pan slash oven so like you know how when you're cooking steaks like it cooks quicker in the frying pan because you sear it yeah so y'all like don't fall for this oven mentality thing though I feel like I'm probably the only individual that would look at that and think it was an oven <laughs> I'm actually so hungry and tired <laughs> this is so depressing oh yeah <laughs> so yeah my review of this is I actually really like this product um in the future I'm probably gonna try again well I have to try again I've got it now um, but I'm probably going to try and follow the instructions I've been given as opposed to just go in as my emotion takes me. Let's just blame the tiredness, people. So, yeah, it was kind of a fail, but then the fail was my fault and not the product's fault. Um, by the way, I know I'm kind of bigging this up. This video ain't sponsored. They don't know I exist. Um, though, if you all happen to be watching this video at Goodman's and you want to help a sister out, my email address is in, is in the description box. We're basically at the end of this video, at the end of this evening, just at the end of my tether. Okay, no, it's not that bad. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I sincerely hope you didn't spend the whole time laughing at me, though I probably would have spent the whole time. In fact, I am laughing at me because I don't even understand what I just did. I don't even understand how it says clearly. Cook something for five minutes and I cooked it for 25 minutes and then I'm wondering why it's burnt. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, y'all. I'm tired. Okay, so following from that disaster of a dinner I just cooked, um, <laughs> I actually had to just go and have a shower. You know when you're just kind of like, you know what? There's nothing I can do now. Let me just go have a shower and process this. Y'all, I'm just gonna say that I was tired, um, and that's it. I'm just gonna say I was tired. I don't know what happened. Let me put on my glasses because I actually can't see a thing without my glasses. Ooh, I can see. I'll probably like do another video of me using it once I figured it out. So be on the lookout for that. <laughs> if you're brave enough <laughs> to come into my kitchen again. <laughs> oh, y'all. Now I'm thinking about it. I kind of feel like it's more like a frying pan than it is uh than it is an oven though a part of me also feels like that's a dangerous way to view it i should just view it as what it is it's not a frying pan it's not an oven it's a multi-cooker now if any of you like i don't know if you all were just watching this video for the sake of watching it um thank you so much for watching by the way but if any of you were actually watching um because you're thinking of getting a multi-cooker um what i will say is do a bit of research before you actually make a purchase so obviously, like I mentioned earlier on, there's so many different types, like you have really deep ones. So like with my one, you can tell it's pretty, like, it's not that deep, which is fine because I have a separate kitchen that I'm going to be using for like heavy cooking. This is just more for if I want to heat stuff up, if I want to fry an egg, like the really quick stuff. So what I will say is like, you know, depending on how you want to use it, make sure you do your research. Like, you know, if you're planning on cooking stews and all that stuff. A deeper one might be better for you actually um, but then if you are interested in purchasing this multi cooker um, I will leave a link in the description box just so you can well link straight straight through and buy it um, unfortunately the people I bought this from they don't sell it online but then I'll leave like an Amazon link or something just so you can find it on Amazon and you can know exactly which one I was using I feel like there were some good bits I feel like it was all going pretty well up until I dumped <laughs> the instructions and decided to go freestyle um so it's kind of a mixture of what to do slash what not to do um with the goodman's multi cooker anyways y'all i am tired and i'm probably just going to keep on talking forever and ever and ever and this video is probably 50 hours long by now so i am just going to take the time to stop now i'm going to take a breath and i'm going to say god bless you jesus loves you and may the spirit of god be with you bye guys